this session is now recording. Okay. Well, I am so happy to have uh, Tamara Bubble here with me today. And uh, if you don't know who she is, you should know who she is. She, she's going to be your new favorite rapper. And your Absolutely. new favorite rapper is going to be a girl. How long did you toil as a artist before you found out about licensing? How many years were you an artist before licensing came along? Uh, I want to say at least seven. I feel like I, I've been pursuing for so long that I started to lose track of the years <laughs> of just not being successful. Um, and just, uh, you know, doing tons of open mics, tons of showcases, tons of live performances, tons of radio interviews, like all the things that you think that you need to do as an artist to build a fan base. I, I mean, I've even like sold CDs, like on the street, like busking, singing outside, like I've done it all. Um, and I still could never find my fans. <laughs> I ran the ads, I did the PR yeah. stuff. I did everything that um, my budget would allow, that my resources would allow, that my time and energy would allow. And I still saw no success. I make my living working for artists. I help them. I consult with them. I help them with their songs. I help them record. I help them market. And they get to the end of the marketing cycle and they're like, that's it? I mean, yeah, that's it's not the even <laughs> It's not even like it was 10 years ago where you could make a CD and you could sell CDs at least yeah. back those yeah. days, you could at least have a possibility. I used to sell people on the fact that I could make you an album. Yeah. You might spend 15 grand on it, but you can make a thousand of them and sell them for 15 bucks and make all right. your money back. You can't do right. that now. I took a course that was just about how to make money in music. I was going through the modules one by one because my goal at the time was to, I want to make a living from music in music like I, yeah. I was doing a bunch of odd jobs outside of music and i didn't want to do that i wanted to somehow figure out how to make money in music um the third module was kathy's only module in that course <laughs> and <laughs> i i went i got through that module and i i stopped the course um i had already figured out what i was going to do That's what it. was going to work right there. what I was going to fund it it was it was light bulb yep. okay i don't need a label i don't need an investor i don't need the marketing budget will come from the licensing um, and so when you said focus earlier on music licensing, I really think that indie and DIY artists, and I always stress this, it, it doesn't even need to be your primary focus. I feel like music licensing needs to be your sole focus <laughs> um, just because of the catalyst that yeah. licensing is yeah. in terms of the marketing dollars, in terms of the structuring, like even your rollout and your releases and your songs and what should be your single. Like you get a, a national TV commercial, that that's your single. That's where you put your money because someone else is already putting millions possibly behind it so why would yeah. you fight that with another song yeah. with a different single what like th there's no guesswork in this they're going to let millions of people hear your song on their budget so that's your single <laughs> no doubt amen and, and, and amen yeah and i only say that because you know i've tried to be introducing my clients over the past three years in, to licensing and and steer mm -hmm. them away from the traditional i gotta make product and put it on Spotify. And then I got to go do Absolutely. a gig and all, all this stuff. And then they realize yeah. how hard that is. And they're like, uh, and, yeah. it, and how little that brings back, especially now when the main delivery item is just Spotify. And that's mm -hmm. not that Spotify is terrible. I'm not a Spotify is bad guy. I, I love Spotify. I'm, I am not either. Streams. Yeah. But, um, the, at, at, but you can't just do that, put it on Facebook and expect a career, to, you know, and say, Hey, I got a single on Spotify, Spotify. And then they go, now what? Check I'm me out. Gonna... That's the yeah. favorite words. Yeah, Check me exactly. out. Check out my single. Pre-save, 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 pre-save. Nobody's listening. <laughs> pre-save, pre-save. <laughs> Most people don't know what even pre-save means. They're like, what right. does pre-save mean? <laughs> pre-save for what? So where oh, do I God. get the CD? Do I pre-save the CD? Is the, you know. <laughs> So absolutely. Yeah, I, I know. And I live this with most of my artists. And so I love that. As a matter of fact, I heard you say this very thing in an interview recently. I can't remember who it was with, um, but you did. You said artists need to make their sole focus licensing. I thought this is who yeah. I need to talk to because absolutely. this is a hard thing. And, and once you understand all that you've been able to accomplish with this and how much of that has taken Tamara Bubble to the next level as an artist, yeah. From all the licensing, that is the mm -hmm. point in the first place. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So uh it didn't take you long to make the switch. You you were like, that's what I'm doing. I'm going there. Yeah. I don't need to I, I didn't even finish the course. Like it was like, I don't need to know how to make money with these other ways. Cause there was a ton of more modules, like live shows, you know, the college, uh touring, all that stuff. And it was like, no, I, I 
music licensing. That's it. That's it. What was your real first signing and how did it come uh, about? Um, my first uh, license, there were seven songs in um, Hustle in Brooklyn. Um, and it was just a, at a live conference that I went to. I went and networked and I met a music supervisor there. I actually, it was a Sync Summit conference. I should say that. I should yeah, Mark's. Because, yeah, Mark Frazier. Shout out to yeah, Mark. Uh, it was a Sync Summit conference I went to. I met the music supervisor there. It's like, um, I think I think I spoke on a panel at the conference. I, I don't remember. Um, but somehow they, they introduced me to the music supervisor and he was working on a show and he needed some hip hop. And I sent him a ton of music and a lot of it worked uh, yeah. for the for the season. And that just kind of showed me right there like that that was, this is it. Oh, I can do fire. it myself. I, you're like me. You, you work with a volume of songs. Yeah, a lot of yeah. writers that we meet have 10 or 30 and they're like how do i get into it and i'm like write more and produce more and have more because they can want to hold on to those and say well i don't want to give anybody you know let anybody use my song because it's special to me or whatever yeah i i tend to think you have a tremendous amount of songs that you are constantly producing and and having ready is that true absolutely and i i, I do uh talk about that in the book as well like don't if you're too precious about oh putting this song over precious. here oh i don't want to sign it exclusively with this one because now i can't like then you don't have enough music if you're concerned about one of the songs you don't have enough songs you had another job what were you doing at that time day job i was a cpa licensed CPA. accountant oh and, well that's a good uh, place to start um, i traveled 100 percent of the time so wow. i was always super busy but i i started to use the accounting to help me with the music and I and now I still do my you know my taxes my business sure. taxes and stuff so it definitely helped as far as me being organized detailed good with spreadsheets and all that job it it was very helpful very instrumental in in the business side of Tamara Bubble being successful so um, how long until licensing began to pay off enough to not have to do CPA full-time uh I quit during the pandemic uh July 2020 so about is when two, I, um, two or three years? Yeah. So I got the first placement, I should say that, maybe a little over a year after I took the course. So it, it doesn't happen overnight. Around 2018. <laughs> I didn't start getting then. syncs right away. Right? No, I want to November talk about the reality of that. I really want to talk yeah. about the reality of that because a lot of people skip over that and they say, oh, you can get this much money up front and then you get this much money back. But they don't understand the realities of how long it takes up fronts to yeah. actually get to you sometimes. So the yep. first license was November 2018. I started for goodness sink December 2019 and I quit my day job July 2020. That's a, the full timeline on it. That is pretty cool. So about a yeah. three year timeline there. And those upfronts come usually up front or do they take a while to get there for you? Is it or is it so different for you everything? It's different for the type of media. I find that commercials tend to pay the quickest. Um, some commercials, you'll, I'll get it in the same month. And those tend to be the higher dollar ones. And yeah. that's probably because they already have the marketing budget set aside. They're just waiting for the song to pick. And then here you go. Here's your money. TV, you have to think of the volume of placements. There, there could be 50 to 100 cues in one TV show episode. Yeah. So uh, yeah. you can't expect to get your money two weeks later. So with TV, I tell most artists, don't even look for the thing six months until six months out after it airs. Honestly. So do you find now, again, I'm talking to someone who will likely work harder than the rest of us ever will. But um, <laughs> because I, I just see, I mean, all you got to do is go to your, uh, your Instagram alone. It's exhausting just to look at each thing <laughs> and you see show and then we did this and then this and this, and this, and this, and anybody mm -hmm. who looks at that, it's very daunting to look at that and think, how am I ever going to get to that amount of work? But uh, that's where hustle comes in. I mean, you should really call mm. this for hustle's sake, because you you really, uh, for goodness sake, comma hustle, you know, because I, I see that in you. And I've continued to see your stuff on Spotify, you know, I, so I see those singles coming out every month, mm. every month. Mm. And, mm. and has it always been consistent once it got started? Or does that depend on hustle? I think sync, there's no guarantees, like as an artist, and you're going into sync, understand that you could it could replace your income and you could do this full time, but go in expecting nothing, expect to get no placement. And then you will work hard to make sure you get one. So let's talk about the actual pitching and how you do it. Obviously one way you do it is through your connections. 
you write a new song, you produce it, and you think, oh, this is this is a good one. What's the checklist for what you do after you have that song? Where does it go first? Where does it go second? Or does it? After I have the song, it goes to the music supervisor's ears. So, and how does it go um, to music supervisor's ears through your Instagram or? Uh, no. So it's you have behind the scenes. Email list? I, it doesn't publicly get um, sure. any kind of social media promo until until there's a placement. And I I, I talk about this as part of like the strategy, um, in, in the book. So I won't go yeah. into too much detail on it, but definitely yeah. the the music hits the music supervisors. It, it's in the background. Once it's created, okay. I'm moving on to the next one. I don't even focus on trying to get like it perfect and i want to say this because i think some artists that your catalog is lacking because you spend too much time on one song you're too precious with this word you're too precious with this chorus you're too precious with this like make your music and put it out make your music and send it to the music supervisor and just be confident in what you created and stop feeling like you have to go back and change it just because you can go in the studio and re-record something and that way you'll build more catalog like you need catalog for sync like you need catalog, whether you're going to the library route or the sync agency route or the direct pitch route. You need, the more songs you have, the more opportunity you can pitch for. So why yeah. would you just sit on just 10 songs? Yeah. Why and, wouldn't and you have a hundred songs? Yeah. And, yeah, and that's that way with any kind of licensing. You just have to have a lot of music. And I don't think folks understand this. And by the way, when we keep talking about book, I haven't mentioned it yet, but what we're oh. really talking about here is uh, Tamara's book, From Sync to Superstar, and this will be one I will be putting on my phone here very soon to read all her secrets. Mm. But um, because that's how you <laughs> learn. All, hey, we learn from other people's secrets. And I mm. learn from what Jesse is teaching over on his channel, Sync My Music. And everybody learns from all these secrets they find out here and there and here and there from this mm-hmm. person. And so uh, this book is going to be something that's going to be required reading if you want to move from artist or composer to sync superstar because that's certainly what you are for sure i mean you are the best case that i've seen perhaps in my career of someone who is goes from amateur slash semi-pro artist status to six uh super success in uh in music but um i'm sure there are other people i just don't know that have done this Mm -hmm. in licensing and and, because a lot of licensing people are behind the scenes they're right. they're not necessarily artists they're composers and they don't care to be on line and do all sorts of stuff do you find uh, speaking about artists speaking about artist things do you find that you're getting more streaming through spotify and streaming services because of the licenses and talk about a little bit about that maybe about yeah. shazam and stuff like that the reason why i call the book from sync to superstar it's not even me personally because i actually don't like fame it's the potential and the trajectory for the average indie artist with no label, no investor, and no marketing budget. If you have no money, there is no reason why you should be focusing on anything else other than creating songs and getting them licensed. Mm -hmm. And um, I talk about in the book too, just about how the catalyst that sync licensing is. So um, when you mentioned the playlist, even like the live shows, so I'll go through each of these a little bit. Um, With playlisting, artists uh, try to release their songs. I think if you have like distro kid, you have to turn in the song three weeks so they can potentially review it. So Spotify can potentially review it and put it on editorial playlists. You never get any of those playlists. Uh, <laughs> it doesn't matter how sweet you try to make the submission or the pitch. I know, you never I've tend tried. to get any of those. <laughs> Unless you're so is many like- people and I've tried for mm-hmm. my stuff, other people, artists stuff, all sorts of brands. I don't think we've had one. Dozens I haven't had one in my own career. So just, That's just, crazy. just so you, so you understand the level, the magnitude of competition for that, those few slots and those yep. few playlists. Um, yep. So you, with this playlisting, right, you're trying to get on these editorial playlists, but if you get a placement, you are on the editorial playlist because there are shows, especially the big popular shows, they have Spotify, official Spotify playlists, official, official Apple music playlists, official Deezer playlists on all of the DSPs, they have them. Um, And they have built in audiences. They have millions of viewers that are tuning into these shows. So you're not just going to get on a editorial playlist and then get pulled in a day or two when these people skip over your song because they don't know you. They're going to be fans of the show that continuously stream your songs because they've heard it in the show. And a lot of times, it doesn't even matter how prominent the placement was. I have songs. um, My highest stream song was a background use and it was so low and you could barely hear it but it's on the official spotify playlist because the show is so big it has its own playlist 
and they just you know put all the music from the show there so it doesn't even matter if they didn't hear it in the show the yeah. fans of the show will listen to the entire playlist and now that's my most streamed song and yeah. so you can't pay for that kind of promotion on your music and i was paid to do this like <laughs> they gave me money to promote me the right. genius of that like you just it's magical <laughs> So right. is streaming income, download income in your income streams? Is it is it a so, good percentage? It's not even on my radar. I, I feel like uh, my licensing income is 95%, probably more. The beauty of it is that um, the streaming income is increasing. I just have it sitting there watching and the numbers are really rising. And it's crazy because I'm not paying for promotion. Like, is it all the sync licensing is bringing this? So it's and just so, another nice little stream. It's just another little stream. And, and the stream is growing from the licensing. And like, that's why I say that it should be, sync should be your primary focus, your sole focus, because it's going to, you're going to appreciate Spotify when the numbers rise. So upfronts and your PRO checks, are they, what part of your income are they? 40%, 50%? I think upfront 60%. is 90% of my income. And for goodness sake, and even before I had my agency and was getting commission, it was still the sync licensing like there's no there's no way you could go out on the corner and sell enough cds to make what you can make from one placement like even if it's a low budget sync like I don't think you, you can still sell CDs anyway <laughs> the efficiency of sync licensing for the indie artist and then you don't even have to go live and try to promote and perform and travel and get in this hot sweaty van and like you don't have to do any of it unless a song takes off and then people will pay you to perform it yeah. like um, do you think that producing the kinds of music you do primarily. Now, I know you do a lot of different things and would like to do a lots of different kinds of, of genres, and so do I. But mm -hmm. doing rap, hip hop, generally upbeat music pays off for you with licensing, personally? Uh, I mean, I guess personally for my own catalog, yes, I have probably more hip hop and pop and R&B than the other genres. However, a lot of my catalog gets placed like everything from ballads to like high energy. So I don't want to say that this style of music is what works. Honestly, I I personally believe that with the music that you have sitting in your catalog, someone is looking for that type of music at this very moment, regardless of your genre. Um, I always think about all of the opportunities that my music doesn't fit. And that means that there's some other artists out there making that music and they just don't know about it. And, and that's why I think artists should focus on think licensing because there is a need right there is a demand right now for your material yeah. like there's somebody sitting with a budget willing to pay you they just need to find the song and um so your job should be to get out there and meet I, these people but you need to network with the people that are behind those screens that review your music like the the taxi people <laughs> um just because i can't tell you there's been opportunities that uh, they didn't even have enough time to post the brief online because it's like a short deadline and yep. they'll remember my music and they'll reach out to me. Do you so have briefs things... coming to you from music supervisors and stuff that you have relationships with? Absolutely. Okay, great. Well, Absolutely. that's really cool. And, and some of those, those have just come and people need to understand from conferences, from taxi, from meeting people at different things, from doing good work for people before and all those kind of things. And that's all in your book from sync to superstar. Yes. And I will tell everybody how to get to that in the notes below. Um, why a book and not a course or an academy? Why isn't there a uh, P-Bubs Academy, you know, or? Uh, I, I didn't have time. I don't have time to teach a course. And also there were so many people reaching out to me in DM and email and can you help me with this and this? Probably want to consult them, right? Right. And so I, I do consulting, but I don't even have time to really do that because it's just too much time. And so, um, I, I felt like the book would reach a wider mass of people and get them all on the same playing field. Um, of course, people are at different levels and, and you don't know if you need the basics or you already got the basics and you need the advance. So for people that kind of are already aware of sync or that have read my book, um, I have an advance, I have a Patreon um, where I'm, I'm doing like even oh, cool. more secrets and okay, like cool. just more detail on um, sync licensing and just how to fully just like really go to superstardom with these Good. places. I'll put that um, also in the link. Um, okay. If, okay. If I'll, I'll, I'll just go to your site. Is Patreon on, on your site as well? The Patreon yeah. site? Yeah. So uh, the official website from sync to superstar.com has the Patreon link, but it's patreon.com forward slash Tamara Bubble. Yeah. Now, since you 
are an artist at heart and you think of yes. yourself that way, let's talk about your new yes. record. Just came out. Yes. Sorry, I'm old your school. Favorite, your favorite rapper is a girl three. I call it a record two, uh, <laughs> even though there's no vinyl or anything. For yeah. it. But uh, uh, it's, it's uh, an album of strategy. It's an album of me executing and, and all the stuff that I preach about in the book. It's I'm following my own strategy in real time because I think a lot of artists feel like, oh, she did that, but what has what placements has she gotten lately? Or what has she done? Like, I am actively executing my book. I am not a superstar yet. I, I can go all the way there if I so choose with these placements. Yeah, but superstars don't too. stop working, you know? Absolutely, superstars absolutely. Stay, stay superstars because they still work. Taylor Swift isn't just sitting around eating bonbons. You know, yes. she's she's busting yeah. it, redoing her whole albums. You know, I mean, yeah. that's what artists who make it do. So how is this a, are the songs about the steps in the book? Is that kind of the way it goes? Oh, no. So the songs is just, a creative and that's the thing about my art um it's it's just me as an artist so it's um and I want to say this too because a lot of artists feel like oh I'm a sync artist I make music for sync no you're a recording artist you're a performing artist because if the song takes off and someone's willing to pay you 20k to go perform it one night you're going so you're you're not a sync artist you're an artist that gets placements <laughs> like your stable lot deal where you wrote the song you wrote that thing for them and then they brought you out to do it and be in the commercial commercial yeah well, and so cool. just just I talk about this in the book, too, but just like never say no to opportunity, especially when it comes to things, because you don't know which placement will be the one that really catapults your career. Um, yeah, awesome. Well, Tamara, thank you so much for your time. I know you are so busy, so I'm not going to keep you any longer. I'm going to put all the links to all the stuff we talked about below. I'm going to go read your awesome. book and everybody else needs to you know, to learn those secrets. You just got to put yeah. that kind of uh tea bubble uh uh energy and passion behind it that execute you can tell. take action absolutely take action, take action work keep don't just read the book on. do the book yep. <laughs> be, <Yeah>. the book. <laughs> be the book <laughs> thank you so much for being with me today thank i appreciate for having it, me. it was let's fun. stay in touch through instagram and all that kind of stuff and we'll awesome see you next we'll time do. thanks all right bye-bye take care bye